Hello. You know, the vast majority of camcorders sold throughout the uh, 80s and 90s and into the noughties were video 8. Uh, and a much less uh, popular format was VHSC. Now, I've done a video before, link up here, showing how to uh, work around a problem that can happen with video 8 uh, when the original camcorder went out of alignment because the guides that drive the tape uh, and hold it relative to the uh, head, um, they would not be locked down properly and they'd wind the way up or down and cause uh, a particular recording to be out of alignment. And I could match a player to match those defective recordings. Now, that fault can happen with pretty much any video cassette format, uh, but it's less of a problem with VHS and beta and the likes because the track width is so much wider, at least not such a problem if long play wasn't used. However, this VHSC tape is one that has an alignment problem. So uh, the first like half a second of this tape plays okay, and then the rest has a mistracking bar at the top of the picture. So we're going to have to try to align a player to match. And a further complication to this, I'm UK based, and this is an NTSC recording. However, most UK uh, players will play NTSC tapes. So first thing I need to do is put it into uh, one of these ghastly adapters. Um, you have to make sure you don't get any slack on the tape when you put it into the adapter. If it sits on the wrong side of these guides, it can chew the tape a treat. And I think that's one of the reasons that VHSC tapes are often chewed. So once it's loaded up, you need to check that the tape runs nicely all the way along the edge. Now, I don't want to misalign one of my top um, Super VHS machines with time-based correctors and all these nice features just for this bad tape. So I'm going to use a slightly more modest machine here, uh, but it's still a Panasonic. Actually, this is a DVD player and VHS uh, machine in one combo contraption. Uh, and I'm going to see if there's any chance of matching it to this defective recording to get at least a satisfactory uh, picture from it. Let's get stuck in. Okay, so this is the machine I'm using. Uh, it's, uh, like I say, a fairly modest mach machine. It does have uh, hi-fi stereo sound, but it uh, only has composite video output. I think given that we're just trying to get something from this tape, that will do. Now we'll um, put this in and see what we get. And the problem here is that the top of the picture is a mess. But as the machine tries to auto track, that bar is moving up and down a little bit. And that's crucial because if it didn't do that, if it was completely stationary, that might imply that there was no recording on that part of the tape because the tape was creased or there was some other fault that prevented the machine from making a recording on the part of the tape. But uh, in fact, we're seeing that it does move up and down a bit which says to me the most likely scenario is that it's purely uh, a misaligned head guide and we might be able to match a player to that faulty recording. And I have special tools for the head guides as well. So let's start by taking the lid off this machine. What is it? It's um, DVD, CD player and video cassette recorder. It's not even a DVD recorder, so it's nothing special. It says the model number is NVVHD1 implies it might be their first combo deck in, from the dying days of VHS. Something to note about this, there is an S video out, but that's only for the DVD side, not for VHS. Right, here's our fairly basic mechanism. And it seems to be tolerating the fact there's light shining into it because of course, which has, has this problem with opto sensors. Now here are the two guides. I should point out this machine is being run from an isolation transformer. So even though I don't want to stick my finger in a power supply over there, it's a lot safer than if it was being run on raw mains. Right, from one of my um, alignment packs here, I believe that this is the uh, correct size guide adjuster. Let's try playing the tape and see what we get. So is guesswork if it's the input or exit guide. This is the input, that's the exit. I suspect this is input, that's just my guess. So let's 
try adjusting it slightly. Now this is not the correct tool, let's find one of the correct size. Okay, I'm going to try rotating anti-clockwise slightly. No improvement. Back to its start position, clockwise. No improvement. Back to its start position. OK, we will try the exit guide. Making a bit of a mental note of where it is at the moment. Clockwise, half a turn. If it let me. No, that's messing up the bottom of the picture. Fairly sure this won't help. Anti-clockwise, half a turn. Messing up the bottom of the picture. So I was right that the top of the picture is going to be associated with the left input guide. Um, but it didn't appear that adjusting the guide helped. I'll have to try a bit further. Let's go a couple of rotations. Nope, that's made, made a complete mess of it. Go back again. Keep going, keep going. We are there. We're getting there. I'll adjust it too far for a moment. Right, and I go back a bit. Now that all seems a bit unstable, and you might say, well, that's never going to work. But before I make a recording with this, I'm going to connect it to a digital time base corrector and any frame instability should be improved. That's looking a lot better. So um, I'm going to have a go now connecting that up to a capture system via a digital time base corrector and uh, confirm that we have a nice solid picture. This is, by the way, an SP recording, not a long play. You get more problems with long play recording, so this is relatively unusual, this uh, degree of unplayability but that looks a lot better now so uh, let's give that a whirl with um, a time based corrector now actually running this tape turned out to be even harder than I'd expected because I kept finding that the tape as it progressed the uh, tracking would drift and so I'd have to stop the tape or stop the capture process and adjust the track it, the guide, there's the input guide for a new piece of recording and usually then also have to set the um, tracking control up on the remote control and there are no um, tracking buttons on the machine itself so I have to use remote control for that and then that would run for a few minutes and it would be off somewhere else and I have to stop adjust it and keep editing all these pieces together. So uh, this tape was uh, spectacularly hard work. It took me several hours to complete. But it was worth all the work because we went from something that was initially completely unplayable to uh, a result that was um, I'm sure over 95% good with only very occasional mistrack errors. But having completed what's got to be the hardest VHSC tape I've ever had to run, I've got something else to do. Now uh, the proper way to reset this machine back to its proper alignment would be to get the service manual and find how we defeat the auto tracking, set the oscilloscope here up to the RF um, output from the head amplifier and adjust the guide 
for Perfect FM Envelope. And you may have seen me do this on some other equipment in the past. But in this particular case, this machine may never be used again. So I'm just going to uh, roughly set it using a known good tape and make sure it can play it well, including hi-fi sound. That's the state the machine's been left in when it was adjusted to play the customer's very bad tape. And I'd had to adjust the guide upwards. So I'm going to adjust it downwards now. Then I'll use remote control to set the tracking control to uh, midway. Just by, usually on these you press tracking plus and minus at the same time, it resets it and it's not hunting. So that's a good sign. If I just press and hold plus button on the remote control, it will go off tracking and come back in. So that proves that the tracking buttons are working, but if I hit reset, it's uh, not hunting for tracking, so it's close. Right, I've just been using a pair of headphones connected to one of the line output uh, audio ports to fine tweak the input and exit guide to get the best possible uh, VHS hi-fi playback sound to make sure there's no crackle or buzz because uh, actually the uh, VHS hi-fi track can be even more sensitive to small misalignments of those than is the uh, video content. Pretty much everything I've covered today applies to VHS-C, Super VHS-C and would also apply to full-size VHS and Super VHS. So I hope you've uh, enjoyed the video. Bye for now.